All right, what is up, Utah fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest. And today we're going to be previewing Cal versus Utah. Utah is taking on Cal at home. So huge thing for Utah to come off a tough loss with a game at home, where Utah is historically amazing at home, one of the best home field advantages you know, in all of college football. It should be awesome. You know, it was a long, tedious bye week for Utah, but it was necessary, right? It was tough to live with this loss against Oregon State for as long as we had to do, like a full two weeks living with the loss. So tough go there, but definitely should have given us some time to have some guys heal up. Uh, Brian Ankrum pulled the stat uh, for when he did the depth chart breakdown on the channel here. So go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but I believe it was something like 28% of Utah football players have either missed snaps due to injury or have not played a snap yet. So it is <clears throat> the bye week could not have come at a better time. It should be an awesome opportunity for us to get some of our guys we haven't had back healthy and looking good again. Really good opportunity for Utah there. What we're going to do today is this won't be the deep dive, but it will give you a lot of information. We're going to look mainly at stats today. We're going to look at the strength of schedule the teams have played, you know, points per game, yards per game, that sort of thing. And, and just look at a surface level view of, you know, if everything goes as it's been going, who should win this game? So it should be a ton of fun, guys. Before we dive in, please do make sure you guys drop the video a like. Also, as we go through all the data, please do make sure you guys comment down below how you think the game's going to go, uh, who the star players are going to be, who the difference makers are going to be. I want to hear it. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this won't be the deep dive video, but if you guys do like this type of analytical style of looking at football and you're a Utah fan or a Pac-12, Big 12 fan, whatever, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll have the deep dive coming out later this week, which should be even more info packed for you guys so it should be a lot of fun there uh and make sure you guys share the video with someone as we're going through this video if you guys found it really helpful and like you feel like you know a lot more about the uh the cal game after this the utah cal game after this please make sure you share it with someone else that you think would like it but on that note let's dive in let's talk utah versus cal at rice Eccles stadium all right, guys, let's take a look here. So first thing we're going to be looking at is the Utah offense versus the Cal defense. On the right side of the screen, you're going to see a column that says differential. Basically, that that is uh, at the surface level, what should be the outcome for the Utah offense. So it's basically just the average between the Cal defense and the Utah offense. We'll do the same thing the other way around. Um, but so for all these numbers, you'll have the, the differential right there, but then I also got, want you guys to look at this. So this is strength of schedule difference. So Utah has played the 14th toughest strength of schedule in the country. That means they played a very good to great strength of schedule where Cal has played the 47th toughest strength of schedule in the country, which is more like an above average strength of schedule, right? Um, you can't go too wild because above average is still a pretty decent strength of schedule. If you were talking about, um, you know, if you were talking about like a team that had played 115th strength of schedule versus the 10th strength of schedule, you'd have to make some huge adjustments, right? For this one, we'll make some small adjustments. I'm putting the differential there as a plus 13% for Utah. So we'll go over the adjusted differential in a minute. But basically what that means is any of these numbers that we look at, and I think this is fair. I'd be shocked if even Cal fans didn't find this at least somewhat fair, that you give Utah a 13% advantage on both sides of the ball. And after we look at the regular differentials, we'll look, we'll look at the adjusted differential. So first off, total yards. So Utah is looking at 266 yards per game. That's 127th in the country really bad guys that's one of the worst in the entire country you look at cal here they got a right in the middle of the country defense at 383 yards per game that's 65th in the country which means most offenses in the country are looking at you know 380 or so yards per game and, and utah should be a, a little embarrassed with the offensive effort we've put up so far this year we need to do better, right? So on the surface level, the differential says that we should be putting up about 324.5 yards per game. 
which would be a lot better than we're usually doing. Cal has a very average defense that we should be able to take advantage of. Okay, points per game. Now, this is a big one. This is a weird one. So you look at it, Utah's offense, 121st, one of the worst offenses in point per game in the country. Uh, but Cal's not, not exactly tough to score on. They're 33.4 points per game. That's 104th in the country. Um, re not, not at the very bottom, but like they're, they're in the bottom four fifths. It, it's like pretty dang low for Cal. So that this should tell you a little bit so far guys about what Cal's bringing to the table with their defense. It's not very, it, it's not great, right? It's not a great defense. And so you just adjust surface level differential. Utah should be able to get about 24.85 points in this game and that surface level will go over the adjusted in a bit now this is an area where um cal actually does a good job and utah has struggled right um don't forget utah is playing stacked boxes because our past game's anemic but rushing yards per game utah's 97th in the country it's 122 yards per game uh cal is at 118 yards allowed rushing per game that's 104th in the country so they're Cal's allowing almost exactly what Utah averages. So surface level differential, 120 yards per game, which I think Cal, just like every other team, is going to try to stack the box against Utah. You take a look here. Cal, pretty good rushing defense again. The average yards per rush allowed for Cal is uh, 3.6, where for Utah, they're averaging 3.1 yards per rush on offense. That's a differential of 3.35. Again, we will adjust in a minute. But uh, it does look like in the rushing attack, Cal should have a big advantage. Just to just to remind you guys, I, I don't think that's a genuine sample of Utah's offense. As much as um, Utah has struggled to run the ball, it's because people are loading the box up with guys because we cannot throw. So we'll, now let's move into the passing game. This is where it gets even worse. We're averaging 144 passing yards per game. That's terrible. It's 120th in the country. And don't think that there's 10 teams worse than us at throwing the ball. Really what that is, is there's 10, there's probably at least five, six, seven of those 10 teams behind us are good at running the ball. And that's why they're not throwing it. I, I can tell you guys, we are one of the worst passing offenses in the country right now. The good thing is Cal's defense is susceptible to the pass. We're averaging 144 yards per game through the air. They're allowing 265 per game's average through the air. So good look for us, right? A, a good sign for us. So they're 105th in the country. Surface level differential, we're looking at 204.5 passing yards should be what we're looking to achieve. Uh, passer rating for Utah. Um, our average pass rating is 106.5. Not very good. That's 120th in the country. It's towards the bottom. So our passing yards allowed is not just a fluke. When we throw, we are not doing well. That's, that's basically what that means. So we need to do better there. The good thing for us is this is an awesome stat. If you're a Utah fan, you should get excited about this. Cal's defense is their yards allowed is not good but it's actually better than what their true passing defense is. So their average passer rating allowed is one of the worst in the entire country, 167.7, 121st in the country. So you take the, the surface level differential there, it's 137.1. That's a big thing for Utah, guys. If we could have Nate or Nate, it's probably Nate, but Nate or Bryson or whoever out there averaging 137.1 passer rating, that's not amazing, but that would do wonders for our offense. So the final number I want us to look at is red zone percentages. And this is going to be a little different than red zone percentages you'll see elsewhere. Most red zone scoring percentages take into account, um, they take into account field goals and touchdowns. What I did here is I feel like it's kind of not great to look I, I feel like if you're in the red zone how are you not getting a field goal so what i took into account here is how many touchdowns is that team scoring in the red zone so utah's offense not very good 58.3 percent you'd want more than that right touchdown scoring 
Um, but Cal's defense, if you get in the red zone on them, they're allowing 81.8% of them to go for touchdowns. So you adjust for the differential there. We're looking at 70.1%. Even before adjusting for strength of schedule, that's a really good number in Utah's favor. So let's go ahead and expand now, guys. Let's take a look at the adjusted differentials. And like I said, guys, all the adjusted differentials are are adjusting for 13% in Utah's favor because of strength of schedule, which I think is fair. If you guys have a different opinion, drop it in the chat. But I do believe you do need to adjust there. That's a pretty decent strength of schedule difference. And I didn't do anything crazy. 13% is significant, but it's not wild. Like it's really not going to do anything crazy to change the numbers. If you look here, the numbers are still pretty close to what it was before. But let's take a look. So total yards, once you adjust for strength of schedule, Utah should be looking to put up around 366, 367 yards. Now that's really exciting, guys. And I'm going to defer back here. So our red zone percentage is adjusted to 79.2 once we put those numbers in. And why that's really big for us, guys, is that means that we're going to get in the red zone. If we can get 366 yards on these guys, I'm going to guess that's four to five trips to the red zone. And you get four to five trips to the red zone, this number right here, points per game, makes a lot of sense, right? 28 points is what we're looking to score against Cal. That doesn't seem crazy to me. That, that really doesn't. I, I think 28 to 31 is probably a good number as I look at this, a, a good guess, right? And uh, you take a look at Utah here. We're also, it looks like we'll run the ball a little better. Uh, we'll pass the ball a little better. We won't, th that'll be 231 yards isn't crazy, but it, it'll be enough to probably get us over that hump. And then I want you guys to look at this. So we address for strength of schedule and our average passer rating are that they should be allowing us to get is 154.9. That would put us in a really good spot throwing the ball. It doesn't win us the game, but it puts us in a good spot, guys. So, um, um, looks looks good for Utah, right? Looks good our offense against their defense. Now, if there's any, just just a quick thing to touch on before we move on to the next group, right? Before we move on to our offense or our defense against their offense, Cam could be back against Kyle. I know we had that that radio interview that has a lot of people down, but there is a shot. I'd say it's not a super high shot, but there is a shot. But I'm taking all these numbers without Cam being in. I also want you guys to consider all the other offensive firepower that hasn't been in. The big one for me that stands out, the big two, honestly, are Micah Pittman and Jaquindon Jackson. Jaquindon Jackson way more, though. Jaquindon Jackson changes this running game big time. So if he's in and he's able to tote the rock and look awesome for Utah, a lot of those rushing yard numbers go up quite a bit. And I think I could see our offense putting on a pretty dominant performance against this Cal defense if Jaquindon Jackson's in. Uh, so that's the Utah offense versus the Cal defense. All right, guys. And if you've been watching the video up to this point, please make sure you smash that like button. It'll help get it out some more Utah and some more Cal fans. Also, comment down below. You haven't seen the other side of the ball played out yet. So whichever side you're on, I would love to hear what you think about how much I accounted for strength of schedule or which numbers you think stuck out to you that I might not have highlighted or if you just agreed with what I said, feel free to drop that in the comments. Uh, but just make sure you do. And we're going to have the deep dive later this week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do and share the video with a friend. Let's go ahead and dive in to Utah's defense versus Cal's offense. All right, guys. And here we go. We are now looking at Utah's defense versus Cal's offense. And uh, with this one, with the strength of schedule, instead of a 13 point, 13% uh, advantage for Utah, I mean, it's still a 13% advantage. What we're doing is taking away 13% because this is Cal's offense versus our defense. I hope that makes sense there. So uh, let's take a look here. Start off with the first big one, total yards. So surface level, we should see Cal actually get 382.6 yards against this Utah defense. That's a lot of yards. Let's hope that is not the case. Uh, they Cal definitely, I would say, overall has a better defense or offense than they do defense, right? It's not a crazy good offense, but it does 
shine in one area, but that one area happens to be an area that Utah defends really well. Before we dive into that, let's talk about points per game. Cal's offense is averaging 32.8 points per game. Utah's defense is allowing 13 points per game. Utah's defense is sixth in the country at points allowed. And Cal's offense is 34th in the country at scoring points. This is a uh, this is a good offense against an elite defense. So don't, don't think Cal's not bringing firepower on offense. Uh, but this is where I think you'll start to, to see things go in Utah's favor a little bit. So check this out. Rushing yards per game. Cal is killing it on off offense. 209.2 rushing yards per game. That's 12th in the country. But they are going up against Utah's defense that is only allowing 68.5 rushing yards per game. That's fifth in the country. And that is including, and I know Oregon State played Cal as well, but that is including an Oregon State offense that runs the ball really well. Utah limited it, limited them pretty well. So that's pretty impressive for Utah. And it holds up in the yards per rush, right? Utah's average yards per rush allowed is 2.3, where Cal's average yards per rush for their offense is 4.9. You meet that dab smack in the middle, 3.6. Uh, we will adjust in a bit, but just, just looking it over before we do. Um, Utah's got a good, a really, really good run defense. Cal's got a really good rushing offense. That should be a, a fun matchup to keep an eye on. Now, where both teams don't do super well um, is against when Cal has to throw the ball and when Utah has to defend the throw. Now, I do want to make a, a, a statement. Cal has a new quarterback playing uh, that got his first start last week. Um, he looked really good against Oregon State, right? He looked really good and threw for a lot of yards against a team that we could not boot, move the ball against. So I just want to make sure that's clear before I dive into passing yards. So I would say even with the adjusted, I'd, st I'd still probably respect Cal's ability to throw the ball. So passing yards, 234.4 per game for Cal. Utah's only allowing 253 per game. So Cal's uh, 65th in, in passing offense. Um, and Utah is 84th in passing defense. So uh, Cal's got a little bit of an advantage there. They should be able to throw the ball against us because don't forget this new guy looked really good. Um, my, my good thing for Utah in, in this aspect is that we do have a full game of tape on this guy now. So I think it, it won't be so easy for him to move the ball. He was kind of an unknown when Oregon State played him, but now he's not an unknown. We have a full game of tape where he threw for a lot of yards. So uh, we'll, we'll check that out here in a second. So where I do think it's a good sign for us is passer rating. So even though we do allow a lot of passing yards, a lot of those yards have been in garbage time for Utah. And, and that reflects when you look at our passer rating allowed, right? Passer rating allowed for Utah is 118.7, 33rd in the country. And Cal only averages about 118.9 passer rating. Now, the last game was a different game. Their new quarterback looked really good. Um, but Cal has not shown a great ability to throw the ball game after game. And once we have a full game of tape and we can game plan around this new guy, I could see situations where their coaches do struggle to call plays that are effectively moving the ball against U Utah. I think that's a fair, fair statement. And again, with the red zone scoring here, guys, it is based on how many red zone trips end in a touchdown? So what percentage of touchdowns does Utah, Utah allow once teams get in the red zone? Only 45.5%. And for Cal's offense, what percentage of their trips to the red zone result in touchdowns? And, you know, even at the surface level differential, I think Utah looks pretty good there. Cal's not a great uh, red zone scoring offense and Utah is a very good red zone uh, defense. So let's go ahead and open it up with the differential here, guys. So the differential tells us once once you adjust for strength of schedule or adjust the differential, sorry. Um, once you adjust for strength of schedule, what do these numbers look like? So just to remind you guys what we're doing here, we're taking the numbers, the differential number and taking 13% lower because of Utah's strength of schedule. 
Um, you take a look here, total yards, Utah with a projected adjusted differential uh, should only be 332.9 yards per game, which should be good for us, right? That means that our projected um, yards per game is going to be more than theirs once adjusted for differential. And, and when you count in the fact that their adjusted points per or red zone scoring differential is going to be significantly worse than ours. Our adjusted red zone scoring differential is a 79 and there's a 47. If we're beating them in yards, I do not see them winning this game. Look at this 19.9 points per game adjusted differential. That means that we're projected to get 28. They're projected to get 20. Good sign for us there. Uh, rushing yards, they shouldn't be able to run the ball against our defense the way they did against other teams, which is going to force them to throw the ball while we have a full game plan of tape. We're projected that this quarterback is going to have a really bad passer rating, barely break 200 yards. So all in all, it looks really, really solid for Utah. Uh, really excited to see how this goes. Um, this is the preview, guys. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you haven't, smash that like button, comment down below. What are your thoughts? I, I want to hear what you guys think. And subscribe to the channel, whether you're a Utah fan or a Cal fan. The deep dive breakdown will come out later this week. And that should be a really cool opportunity for you guys to know about every player. We're going to really break it down this week. This is an important game for Utah. So, so make sure you guys stick around and share this video with someone that would find it valuable. I'm out of here. Go Utes.